Well, today, UK competition regulators are reviewing Microsoft's relationship with OpenAI. The watchdog probing if the tech giant's $10 billion investment resulted in a merger-like situation. Now, this comes a week after the chat GPT creator saying Microsoft will have a non-voting board seat. Now, Microsoft is no stranger to scrutiny from its UK antitrust regulators. This is the second probe for the company this year. So how will this review impact Microsoft? Well, for more on this, Rohit Kulkarni, Kulkarni Roth, Capital Partners Managing Director, is here. Thank you for joining us this morning. So, so what do you make of this? Essentially, the CMA is saying this is an acquisition of control here. Do you think this amounts to that? Was that perhaps that, that voting, that non-voting board seat, the tipping point? Yeah, yeah th thanks for having me. I think that that's exactly uh, the, the key point here, uh, the non-voting uh, board seat or board observer seat, as they say. It's a very small board, uh, just three people here, and Microsoft did not have uh, um, anything to say with the board uh, about 10 days back, and now they are slowly inching into the board. They already own 49% of the for-profit arm of OpenAI. So there are there are building blocks coming together for uh, a potential acquisition if uh, there is a fallout between the non-profit and for-profit uh, parts of OpenAI. Uh, so it's right to um, kind of take a closer look at this, given uh, the power that OpenAI has and given the power that Microsoft has with its distribution, that that creates uh, an, a high concentration of power of uh, AI and given what AI means for tech over the next five years. And we know that the EU has been leading the charge when it comes to trying to get mm -hmm. you know, some sort of framework for AI regulation here. Do you think the US is likely to follow that lead as they also are having a lot of issues when they're looking at some of these antitrust regulations? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, the Europe, the UK uh, regulators, the CMA folks in UK have always been on the bleeding edge of new tech regulations, uh, given the asymmetric kind of power that big tech has in Europe, and all of them are American companies. So they, they, are, uh, they tend to uh, move a little bit faster. But what we were also surprised by was that uh, not too far back, Biden administration also put out a very lengthy kind of uh, mandate or almost kind of best practices as to what they think uh, AI regulation would look like. Uh, so uh, think about within a matter of six months, they met with a lot of industry experts and Biden administration was able to put together this uh, AI package um, in front of uh, all the big tech companies. And now that conversation has already started. Um, this is a very new technology with a lot of unknowns and more black box behavior, more control with companies with larger data and larger resources. So I think, uh, um, the surprise factor is U.S. is also is following up, but following up not too far behind. And it's interesting because you have the companies themselves trying to make their own rules of the road. You have OpenAI and Microsoft, and then you have the separate alliance that we saw now also coming with IBM and Meta as well. How much is mm -hmm. that? How much do you think regulators are going to perhaps lean on the tech companies to essentially self-regulate and set these rules of the road versus having to take their own route? Um, in my opinion. Uh, Given the the velocity with which uh, AI uh, tech and AI innovation is uh, moving, I think uh, um, it behooves on self-regulation on these companies. Again, it's uh, it's very hard when it comes to a business use case versus a long-term uh, uh, ethical use case. It's it's going to be blurry in the next call it twelve to eighteen months whether these companies can self-regulate. In the meanwhile, I will the executive order from Biden administration was very encouraging. I think. Uh, uh, one would have expected something like that to happen in the in 2024 or maybe 2025 even. But uh, seeing that even before the first anniversary of Chat GPT, that's an encouraging sign. So probably we are going to get more regulations with regards to maybe compliance, with regards to disclosure, with regards to transparency, and then that would be a step towards uh, uh, control and uh, how uh, much power some of these big tech companies will continue to have. And what do you think this is going to mean in terms of the corporate structure of, 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 um, of OpenAI? Obviously, it has its non-profit arm, but then you have Microsoft owning 49% of the for-profit aspect of that company. What are we expecting to happen in terms of corporate structure that could perhaps call cool for regulators or perhaps draw their ire further? 
Um, it is it is a big mystery, in my opinion, Rachel. Um, in my opinion, uh, uh, w- what um, unraveled uh, in the last three weeks at OpenAI is still a uh, still an undisclosed mystery. Probably um, uh, one of the Silicon Valley uh, mysteries that we would never uh, find out. But that does. Uh, kind of put a, a greater uh, kind of a spotlight into governance and in the future of what the for-profit arm of OpenAI uh, could look like. Again, clearly a lot is at stake here, uh, not just the economic value of OpenAI, but the control of the narrative of uh, who is an AI leader going forward. And right now, Microsoft has clearly won that narrative uh, versus other big tech companies. So I think a lot is at stake here. How that unfolds is anybody's guess, uh, but uh, given a lot is at stake, I think um, Microsoft wouldn't be uh, willing to give away control in uh, any time in, in the near future is my thinking. Indeed, we'll all be watching closely. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Rohit Kulkarni, Roth Capital Partners Managing Director. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Thank you.